California, a member of the House Oversight Committee. Congressman, thank you very much for being on the show. I don't know if you got a chance to see the entire uh, Meet the Press interview with Senator Johnson, but we did play just now a good chunk uh, of that interview. Give me your reaction to what you just heard from Senator Johnson. Jonathan, it's really shocking, uh, especially now that we have a second whistleblower. We have text evidence uh, of the president's wrongdoing. And you have the president going on national television asking foreign leaders to investigate his opponents. Here's the irony. The president of the United States is calling for the impeachment of Senator Mitt Romney, and yet you don't have Senator Mitt Romney willing to call for impeachment inquiry against a president who's abused his office. And I guess my question is, when are we going to have even one senator or a couple members of the House step up and say, this is an abuse, we need to look into it? Uh, Congressman, why do you think um, we just witnessed that fiery exchange between Senator Johnson and, and Chuck Todd? And why do you think no Republican is willing to step forward and say that what is happening uh, in the White House from the president is wrong? Because I'm old enough to remember a time when these very things that we've been talking about for, uh, since at least the revelations of the July 25th phone call that Republicans would have been breathing fire on the president if that president had been a Democrat. Of course they would have, but they are concerned about a presidential tweet directed at them. That's why the president shot that tweet against Mitt Romney. He's sending a signal to everyone in the House, everyone in the Senate, uh, if you speak up against me, if you even go near calling for an impeachment inquiry, uh, then I'm going to come after you. And the reality is they're concerned about their seats. They know the re that when Justin Amash spoke out, uh, the next day his numbers were underwater in a Republican primary. They know when this president went and tweeted against Mark uh, Sanford uh, at 4 p.m., Mark Sanford lost his election. The next day the president is in the Republican caucus asking the caucus, so how's my friend Mark Sanford doing? So they're afraid. They're afraid for their political survival if they take on this president mm -hmm. in public. Congressman, what impact do you think, now that we know that there is a second whistleblower, what impact do you think that will have uh, either on, Republican, on Republicans uh, in general on the Hill, but also on the ongoing impeachment inquiry? Well, Jonathan, in candor, I'm not sure if it's going to have impact on the Republicans, because the facts here aren't in dispute. I don't know what more it will take than the president of the United States going on national television asking China and Ukraine to investigate his political rivals. I mean, most Republicans in private, they know this is wrong. Uh, what I do think this will do is uh, lessen the attacks of the president on the whistleblower, lessen his ability to go after someone. And I just want to applaud the extraordinary courage of these whistleblowers who are standing up for the rule of law against some of the most powerful men in the world. Uh, well, let's stick to, stick, uh, to that in terms of whistleblowers. And, you know, the president is attacking, was attacking the first whistleblower, and I can imagine that he will be attacking the second whistleblower. But what would you say to other people who could potentially be whistleblowers in this moment? Because we've heard people on our air uh, talking about the fact that these whistleblowers now have, you know, targets on their backs, whether it's tweets from the president or in their personal, their personal safety, and that might send a chill through anyone who might consider stepping forward with information that they have. You're sitting on the, uh, on the oversight committee. You're a member of Congress. What would you say to a whistleblower who might be com contemplating coming forward? I would say you're true patriots. You are standing up to preserve our democracy. Frankly, you're doing what Congress has been unable to do. We've been trying to subpoena the administration and the executive branch has been stonewalling and you're helping stand up for the truth in getting information out to the American people uh, and preserving democracy. And I understand that it's risky. We're going to do everything we can to protect you. Uh, but I just salute your courage uh, for uh, caring so much about our democracy and uh, putting a check mm -hmm. on the executive branch. Con Congressman, let me ask you one more question before I, before I let you go. You're on the House Oversight Committee. It's one of the what I call the impeachment six committees who, who are looking at potential articles of impeachment. Can you tell me or uh, explain, if at all, if there is any connection, these whistleblower complaints, do they have any impact on your work on the Oversight Committee 
as part of the impeachment inquiry? Yes, they do, Jonathan. Uh, they are part of our effort to build a case about exactly what happened with the president uh, calling uh, Ukraine and asking for political dirt. We have to see who all was involved. Uh, was there a conspiracy? And then we're going to take that information uh, and pass it on to the Judiciary Committee. Mm -hmm. We also need to understand, was there a cover-up in not getting that whistleblower complaint to Congress? And our committee is looking into why uh, that information wasn't transferred. Congressman Ro Khan of California.